what we're doing in this video is adding a drain valve into our air filter box. I was going to include this in the snorkel video, but I hadn't decided what I wanted to use yet. That video has been published. I've since re-removed the air box and I'm just going to make some modifications, which we'll go through today. So you might have found this video by searching for this, in which case you already know why you want a drain valve, but for those that don't, when you install a snorkel, you Sikaflex or silicon up all of your connection points, and you also cover the factory drain plug in the air filter box. This is great because it makes everything waterproof, but the downside to that is that if you somehow get water in your air box, say if your air box has a bad seal around it, or it somehow goes down your snorkel through the ram head, there's nowhere for it to drain out, and you could damage your engine that way. Now this has definitely happened before. It's the reason that in the instructions of fitting the snorkel, it explicitly states that filling the drain hole with silicon is completely up to the installer. So basically, the manufacturers of these snorkels are absolving themselves of liability. They're saying it's your decision to take. Most people obviously would do it, otherwise there's no point fitting it because it's not waterproof. One thing I've never understood is why they don't offer an alternate drain solution as part of the kit. So with a few things from Bunnings, we're just gonna make a tap ourselves. The idea being that 90% of the time, the tap is in the open position, allowing everything to drain. When you're doing a water crossing on mud holes, or you're doing a four-wheel drive trip, you can close the tap for the duration of that trip and then open it up again for day-to-day -day driving. This is a modification that you would hope lasts the lifetime of the car because I'm going to be installing it in a way that it won't easily be removed because there's going to be a lot of Sikaflex protecting this from being another ingress point. So with some cars airboxes, you've got a lot of room to install a lot of different types of things. With the Ford Ranger and Mazda BT-50, there is no room underneath the airbox, which takes away the primary spot that you would install an aftermarket drain. So we're gonna be drilling through the side wall of the airbox. It's not as effective as the factory drain valve, which is on the lowest point. So it will take 10 mil of water before it even starts to be effective as a drain, but it's better than having nothing at all. That's my reasoning behind it. If you do any modifications to your airbox, you want to seat it in position and see exactly what's around it in the engine bay. So our drain point is down here. That is the lowest point of the airbox as it normally sits. That wall there actually points out into a decent sized void, which works to our favor because we can't drill beneath it. We need to drill on that side wall into this empty space here amongst these looms for the headlights. So that's where we're gonna be drilling and inserting our tap. So here's the materials I bought for the job. Now keep in mind, you don't need all of this, but this allows me a little bit of variations in the way I mount it. You only need one tap, but they only had packs of two where I went. This end cap is optional. The idea being behind that, if you don't trust that this valve is sufficient, you add a little bit of tube, then an end cap, and then you add hose clamps. Like I've got the plastic ratchet hose clamp on this end. You can add these types of hose clamps and you can actually cap that, turn it off, and then you've got double protection. And then if you really wanted, you could even put a hose clamp on there just to make it extra sturdy. This here is just 13 mil poly tube for irrigation. These are 13 mil hose fittings, barb fittings. This three to three quarter inch BSP, as are these lock rings. If I was to use two lock rings and have the filter housing there, it means I could have less protruding into the box. Otherwise, I can just do the one lock ring on the inside and have this press up against the box. And I'm gonna sicker flex all of this as well because I want this to be watertight. Now, this length here with the hose and the cap basically takes up all of the allowable space in the engine bay there. If you just go with the tap only, you'll have a little bit of room to play with. The simplest way to do this is you get a little bung, say M12, you drill it down as low as you can with the lock ring on the other side, fit it with rubber washers so it's waterproof, and then you take it off when you don't need it. I didn't go down that path because I wanted to be able to just simply turn a tap on and off. In the end, I found all these materials for about $15, $16 total. Now, there are some downsides to this, the major one being that it's a bit larger than I would have liked. So ideally, I would have found a smaller arrangement than what I've got. The 25 mil or one inch hole required to drill into the airbox is pretty large, and you've got to be really precise with the measurements to get it as low as you can. But on the upside, because it's a 13 mil hose fitting, the valve's a bit stronger, it'll be more leak proof. A lot of your smaller valves might not handle as much pressure. All of this costs less than $20. I think it was about $15 of gear from Bunnings and Reese Plumbing. Now, for those that are interested, 
If you use a tap and one lock ring on the inside, it'll be a 35 gram addition. If you use a tap with an extension piece and a hose clamp with an end cap for double protection, a hose clamp for that, and it's 50 grams. If you use another lock ring, 63 grams. So it's a pretty lightweight modification. So this is a bit bigger than I would have liked. Trying to get as low as we can in the airbox, we need to drill around here, but also fit the lock ring on, on the inside. So it doesn't actually give you a lot of wiggle room. On the inside, you'll notice that the filter sits in a raised portion. And then on the outside, we have this portion for water to collect in. So if we look inside where we want to drill it, see here's the factory drain. This lip will be the absolute extreme bottom. So we can't go any lower than this lip. The inner lip that the water will be trying to get over is 95, 96 mil down from the lip. And wherever we drill, we're gonna have about 12 and a half, 13 mil beneath that as well, which will be the lowest point. So now we get to the measurements. The diameter of the lock ring is 30 mil. So we need to come up a minimum of 15 from the bottom. The bottom is 148. We'll call it 147, because it's just in between. So 147 minus your 15. That'll give you 132. So in theory, you could drill as low as there. You could mark that and that could be the center. But I'm definitely going to give it a little bit of a safety factor. So I'm going to add in five mil, maybe 10, and then I'm going to drill it. So instead of being here, it might be up here. The other advantage being the higher we go, the more this spreads out. So the better chance we are of getting a lock ring on the other side. Now, if you do have to move it away from the wall, there is a tiny curvature in this plastic. Because we're going to fill it with Sikaflex, it won't matter so much that there's a gap between the lock rings and the housing. So that is roughly where it would be. And it does, it will just fit on this inside wall of the plastic. So where the steel rule sits there is the top of the lip. So you have a good 40 mil from our drain port to the lip. It would have to rise above this drain before it even got to that lip. And that's with the five mil safety factor. If you dropped it down further, it'll be even less. Now, obviously it's not as ideal as having something on the bottom, but when I put it back in the car, I'll do a test with a water bottle and I'll just see how well it drains and you'll be able to see how much water it has to hold before it starts draining. So on other cars with different designs, you actually get more room here and you could actually mount something on the bottom. But for this design, it goes through the side. I'm gonna use a hole saw because it's a bit cleaner than a spade bit. And because this is 25 mil, might just have to file it a bit because this is probably an inch or 26 mil or thereabouts. Try and make it even the whole way around. If you get it perfect, you'll even be able to thread this in. I'm not going to worry about threading it in. I just want to get it past the threads and then I'll use a lock ring either side. That will minimise the amount of thread on the inside here. This is the final result here. I've gone with a lock nut on either side to have a minimum amount of thread on the inside here. That also makes the plastic nice and firm. You could argue that it probably wouldn't have any water ingress at all, but I might just put Sikaflex around here just to be safe. So you can see through here, the drain is quite low compared to that inner ring. So it still would be effective. Not as effective as the factory drain would have been because it's on the bottom, but it's still effective nonetheless. Before you install these, you can do a pressure test to make sure that this valve is all good. Otherwise, just return it and go get a new one. I just hooked this up to a hose fitting, so it's just on household pressure. So because I bought these in a pack of two, I decided to test both on the hose. So quite a decent amount of pressure there, and it just stops it dead. So this pressure from the hose will be more than what you'd experience if you were just slightly submerged. And when you're driving through water, you're creating a bow wave and you don't have that pressure against the air inlet anyway. So both of these actually passed. But I think household pressure will be more than what is possibly coming in the other way. Going like that when you're doing river crossing will probably be fine. I'm going to leave it like this open most of the time. If I'm ever doing a water crossing or going on a big trip and I want to leave it closed for a while, I'm just going to fit this end cap in here. I'm just going to push it in. I'm going to have this closed and that's two forms of protection. If you want to go above and beyond, after you push this in, you could also clamp it with a hose clamp. But I think this barbed fitting in here, plus that being closed, will be more than enough. One last thing I want to touch on from the snorkel video that I didn't film was that I went back over everything with more Sikaflex. So on the snorkel video, you'll remember that there is a screw on the top and the bottom. 
But there's one more pushing clip here. That needs to be covered in because that pushing clip, although it doesn't go all the way to the inside of this pipe, it does go into a collar which can then feed in through here. So I'll never be able to get this out again, but everything's sicker flexed up. I put more over the screws, top and bottom. So that's all waterproof now. This is the final bit of waterproofing. I'll just put some sicker flex around here. Make sure that stays away from the tap. So here's the sicker flex after it dried overnight. To get it smooth, just spit in your fingers and pat it down to compact it all. After letting the Sikaflex dry overnight, I've installed it now loosely. I haven't installed the silicon hose and everything yet because I'm going to do a water test. I'm just going to pour this in the outside ring and see what level it gets to before it actually starts to drain. You have to mount it in the car to test this because it actually sits on a bit of an angle where it pulls the water towards the OEM drain plug with our drain being right next to it, although probably 10 to 20 mil higher. I'm just interested to see how well it drains and how deep the water would have to get before it started taking effect. Warning, 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 warning. Now it's important that you don't try this at home. Water is very dangerous. It can kill people. I'm a professional. I've been dealing with water from a very young age. I drink it almost every other day and I bathe in it every other week or so. So don't try this at home. Leave it to me. The feet are bolted in. I have not reconnected the hose to the snorkel yet. So you can see that starting to drain. So overall not as good as the OEM drain position, but the OEM drain position, you can't choose when it's open and closed. So that's why I siliconed it up. I had to close it. Okay, so I'll just do the same test in the far side. Now you can see it draining. Now we'll be able to see how much pulls down here. Ignore this bit that I spilt on the inner ring. The drain won't get rid of all the water. If it came through the inlet, it would go in this lower ring and it would drain down to this level. Because the filter box is sloped, you would just have this little pooling in this corner, which you'd then have to dry out with paper towels, as I'm about to have to do. Again, because we can't get it in the bottom, it's not going to drain everything, but it's more than enough to stop it rising up above this inner ring and it'll stop it pooling from any other location around here. I'm just going to install everything now. I've wiped it out with a paper towel, then I go to blow down with an air blower. So it's all dry in there and I'm happy to reinstall that. I'm not going to cover the reinstallation of the airbox in this episode because it's in the snorkel episode. So there's the tap down there next to the blocked up OEM drain. And just for those that would like to fit this barb in for extra security, it is a bit awkward to get it in once it's all installed but it can be done. When you actually push it in all the way and butt it up to the barb, you've got even more space. So there is enough room to slide this in. It will be difficult to get it back out, especially if you put a hose clamp on it. If I'm doing a lot of water crossings, I will slide this in without a hose clamp because it's quite a tight fitting and then turn the tap to the closed position and that will be double protection. Just be able to get this out with a pair of pliers if you wanted to reopen it into the open position. That's it for this episode. That's just one way to do the drain. I had a few other ideas as well, like using conduit fittings and just putting in blocked conduits as I needed to cross water. I could have drilled a hole on the bottom and just put a bung in there, but it would have been really difficult to get the bung back in and tightened every time because you have to use tools. So with this way, you don't need tools at all unless you want to remove the end cap from the 13mm poly fitting. But in theory, it's just a quarter turn to lock and a quarter turn to open. Another idea I had was raising the airbox with a little space and getting longer screws to fit in and then I could fit an elbow connection on the bottom that could work as a drain with a tap on it. Now this was all about $15 but if you wanted to spend about $50 there's also Fumoto oil drain valves you can use. They are also a quarter turn and you can get I think as small as maybe an M12. Using that you pay a bit more but you could actually go lower towards the factory drain hole because it's only an M12 thread and then have a M12 washer on the other side. You could get quite low because the M12 washer will have a smaller diameter. So reasonably happy with that. It's a bit too late to change it now. Anyway, it's all super flexed in. It drains the water about 60, 70 mil before it gets up to that inner ring. 
Hopefully with the engine running, that will help force more out of the drain. It's still worth checking your airbox just to see if you are getting water in there in the first place and drying it out as necessary. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna drive around with it in the open position. So I can close the ball valve. I can fit that little end cap. I can permanently close it if I want. I just fit the end cap with a hose clamp and leave it in the closed position. There's plenty of other ways you can do it. Each car will have different airbox design. Some airboxes might actually have more clearance underneath, which would be a lot easier to add a drain valve to. I recommend doing this while you're doing the snorkel fitting. Everything's already out. You don't have to go back and try and fit the snorkel silicon hose again. So the hose pressure held on both of these fittings. So I'm pretty happy that they are very secure and no water will seep in through the valve. Okay, hopefully that has been of some help. Done with this little arrangement. Woo! Dinner's ready. $50. So the hose help. Nah, we're done.